Okay, thank you very much. I would like to give a few comments on the responsibilities of OSPs from a business ethics point of view. And why is that important? I th it, it was already mentioned in the previous talk. Um, I think it is important because we are dealing here with companies and we are dealing with very large companies or organizations too. Um, no, there is no different ethics, but it is a question, it makes a difference whether in implementing ethical principles we are talking with uh, individuals or a small group of people or uh, whether we are talking uh, to a large company or uh, organization of a different type. Um, I would like to actually give here uh, one, to make one economic remark and one <coughs> philosophical remark. Basically, the economic one being about competition, the role of competition, and uh, the philosophical one about the notion of responsibility. Uh, now, uh, I would like to stress, some of this may seem straightforward to, to some people, but I think it is not to many of those who are dealing uh, with this matter, uh, activists on the Internet especially, from in some countries more than in others maybe, but um, uh, I find it striking uh, the, the background um, ideas they have, well, they, some simple anti-capitalist ones, and I think it's, it is important to, to keep in mind that um, we are uh, dealing here with uh, uh, mechanisms that uh, belong to the, to the world of economics as well as philosophy too, and we have to take that into account. To give you some examples, um, Oh, sorry. Um, of course, this is probably familiar to, to you. Everybody wants to rule the world, uh, says the economist. Um, uh, Google, well, don't expect privacy when sending g Gmail and so on. Um, controversial ways that uh, Facebook has used your data. And the use of moralizing in this debate is interesting. Well, these are only some examples, of course. The, the greed that is uh, everywhere. Um, uh, Google's greed, Microsoft's greed, uh, the gigantic parasite that makes a fortune from exploiting creativity and entrepreneurship of others, and so on. Um, these are these are actually they all of them are UK examples, uh, but of course I could uh, get uh, easily s some of them from from, uh, from Germany at least and probably other countries too. Uh, so I would just like to say, when uh, considering OSP responsibilities, we should. Uh, bear in mind that there are conditions of competition uh, for those companies that uh, are important. Um, I will elaborate on this. Um, and we should not aim to directly change intentions. Um, I will stress it only briefly here. Um, there will be more on the article. The intentions, whose intentions is the CEO in, in, intentions, is the board intentions, who, who, is the, uh, who are we addressing? Uh, if we are addressing an organization, is there uh, are there intentions of the organization? What are they? And so on, so on. And I think we should tone down the moralization issue. Um, now, from a business ethics point of view, competition has uh, disadvantages, but it's, it has also advantages uh, in, in generating uh, in innovative products, uh, fostering the spreading of new ideas, um, also to er erode positions of power. Uh, on the other hand, morality is constantly in danger of getting crowded out. Now, everything that's to do with situations like prisoners' dilemma or similar dilemmas, um, an approach which I, uh, which I favor, the order ethics, uh, uh, reacts to this situation of morality under conditions uh, of competition, a changing order framework of a society. Not necessarily legal framework, but, but in uh, rules and uh, on, on many levels, levels of companies, branch level and so on. Something that is also, this is just another uh, s a similar theory that uses this distinction between focusing on the moral manager or focusing on the moral market and making markets more moral or making individuals more moral. And then I think uh, I favor uh, uh, the one to the right uh, uh, in a business ethics setting. So I think there is a tendency to de neglect that, uh, well, at least in some countries, but uh, I think as a general rule, competition plays a pivotal role um, for some OSPs directly. But, uh, you could say, but, but some are so big, are, are they competing with others? Uh, at least indirectly they do. Um, 
we can uh, probably discuss on that. Um, there is competition lurking in the background, of course. Uh, they they need us to to uh, keep um, keep uh, being innovative, um, to keep being on, on the forefront of uh, of technology and and so on, because others might get bigger or uh, better. So this is something. What, what I wanted to say about what we cannot expect. Um, but I think we can expect a lot from, from OSPs too, but we need to uh, bear in mind what is the, the mechanism behind that. And I think in, in CSR we have, in the field of CSR, we have a, a lot of examples how uh, companies uh, do many things that traditionally would not have been expected from them. Uh, there's this old uh, dictum by Milton Friedman of the 50s, uh, he wrote in the 70s uh, um, that uh, the uh, uh, social responsibility of companies is just to maximize the profits. But uh, obviously um, now um, uh, the situation has evolved and especially big, but also big companies but also SMEs are doing many more uh, things in fields of human rights, diversity, um, uh, ecological, uh, ecological problems and so on and so on. Um, but there are economic mechanisms behind that. This is not just uh, on, on, the moral, uh, on the moral discourse. Uh, um, and um, it's, it's pe it's especially the, no the, the question, a question of risks. There in, uh, multinational corporations face uh, a huge number of risks, traditional risks, uh, political risks, but also moral risks, um, which are often moral risks now, but can become uh, econ economic risks very easily and very fast, uh, like corruption or uh, discrimination issues that tend to uh, get very expensive in the long run. But um, companies, uh, there are still good examples like Volkswagen, right now, which seem to ignore uh, for a long time uh, uh, risks um, that at first maybe were only moral risks. Should we use this software in, in, our, in our cars? Mm -hmm. uh, they just didn't really um, uh, recognize the possibility that every <laughs> eventually that will uh, be made public and will become a huge economic issue. So in this, in this sense, I'm, I always um, uh, say that um, um, business ethics is a kind of early warning system for risks that can become very uh, expensive later on. So yeah, changes in regulatory laws are, uh, of course, uh, one uh, reason behind it, uh, just some examples, <coughs> but also uh, pressure by NGOs, of course. And, uh, uh, well, I cannot go on, not elaborate on everything here, but uh, reputation is ob obviously uh, an important thing for brands. Uh, the brands we are dealing here with are very expensive ones, or very, um, uh, Im important ones like Google or, or Apple, and uh, to, to putting these uh, in danger is, is, is something that uh, definitely these companies want to avoid, like Volkswagen, um, obviously did not take too seriously. So um, I think in, in the end it might be um, a question of what are the production fun factors um, besides uh, traditional ones like labor and capital, there is also ethics or morality maybe, um, uh, which, is, which becomes more and more important uh, from a CSR or business ethics point and which is relevant for, for the uh, OSPs as well. Um, so uh, measures taken by companies must have more than narrow, narrow, not, not uh, it, of course it will have instrumental value, but it should not have only narrow instrumental value order to be called um, ethical. And the creation of win-win situations, I think, is, is the key uh, point to uh, calling something ethical, uh, something that other philosophers would probably deny. But uh, I, I think this is the only, uh, uh, um, this the only framing that makes sense in, in the business ethics setting. This is just one example for a CSR case. Um, I'm not sure if you have heard of it, that uh, where Shell uh, built a uh, a very uh, a much longer pipeline than necessary in the Philippines uh, to avoid uh, ecological damage to the region as well as uh, staying away from the holy ground of, uh, of the inhabitant, local inhabitants and something that 
at that time was only seen as a moral uh, reason, of course, with the pressure, uh, Brent Spa case at that time behind. Uh, but ten years after, ten years later, um, actually, uh, calculations showed that this was uh, less expensive for um, for various reasons, especially because um, uh, higher co um, uh, construction costs, higher construction costs, and penalties for delay. Uh, and so on had been saved. Um, this is just very briefly. Could it go on talking about this? Okay. Uh, so as I said, I think uh, there are. Uh, we should focus not on the changing intentions, but on changing rules in the law, but uh, also on branch level, which I think is is uh, some, maybe some of the most important uh, level uh, here, and and also. Uh, individual corporations, and uh, because they, of course, obviously, if many of them are very large and have uh, systems of rules of their own. Okay, so I said I would uh, make a, 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 this was the economic point, and and I would make a philosophical point too. Um, and this is the notion of is, uh, responsibility. I mean, there are both both these points that are tied together. But um, it is at least my uh, experience that philosophers still tend to, to stick to notions of individual responsibility. And um, especially moral philosophers that I know. And, and I think it's, it's important to, to uh, in, in this field, to, to stress that we cannot get anywhere without a notion of collective responsibility. Uh, something that, for example, authors like Liszt and Pettit recently um, uh, advocated in, in the group agency approach. Um, and, and just to put it very briefly, um, arguments like, well, a, a collective entity has no consciousness, therefore it cannot be held responsible. I think it's, it's just uh, too, too narrow, uh, a too narrow notion uh, because there can be f uh, function e equivalents for these, uh, uh, for these qualities that uh, here are seen as important for, for um, ethical or moral responsibility. Yeah, you need to have kinds of <coughs> certain kinds of organizational mechanisms. Uh, you need to have uh, st standards of conduct, code of conduct, and so on and so on. Um, I think uh, we can uh, really argue that um, we need um, collective, and there's a, there are good arguments for, uh, for collective uh, responsibility, and uh, especially in and there we again we have a situation of competition in highly competitive situations. Individuals alone uh, cannot uh, even influence the outcome. With the Volkswagen case again, it's not it's not uh, as easy to, as saying uh, whether those were some individual technicians who made a mistake. Um, uh, but obviously, it, it is a question of of certain uh, mechanisms uh, in the company, certain rules that uh, did not work out very well. So I think when talking, uh, I cannot give a list of responsibilities now, but I, I think uh, we, we can expect more uh, than we sometimes think. Um, we can, uh, we can um, rely on economic mechanisms here uh, and expect people, but also organizations, uh, to improve their calculations, um, uh, to calculate in the longer run, uh, taking into account uh, risks, uh, long-term risks, reputation risks, um, uh, legal penalty risks, um, and considering interests of others because you need them for your own uh, um, well-being or your own pro profit maximization in the longer run. And I think this is uh, something that is uh, important from a uh, business ethics point of view when talking about OSP responsibilities. Thank you very much.